Good morning, wrestling fans. Welcome to PWR today, September 19th, 2022. The man they call me it, Linda K. Linda, uh, how are you doing in the Bermuda jungle known as Oak Creek Ikea? <laughs> I <laughs> escaped. I got out. I it's like a panic room for me. Oh, I can see that. But no, made sure to get some of those meatballs and... You like the meatballs, eh? <laughs> and got an armoire. That's what I needed. You know, every time I hear armoire, like, I know the term armoire just from watching the prices right um, when I was younger. You know what I, I think what... of when I see, hear armoire? I think of poor Kramer having to go to the soup Nazi to get Elaine another one and then finding all the recipes for Mulligatani. I need to watch her Seinfeld on the back end. Um, one specifically. <laughs> but no, um, weekend was good. I am up bright and early this lovely Monday. It's, you know, nearing fall. I know we keep saying it's not officially fall quite yet, but uh, I'm getting ready for it. But it's just soaking in the sun. Soaking in the sun. I feel like that was a Cheryl Crow song, but mm -hmm. I digress. Let's talk about Collar and Elbow. I know she's wearing some Collar and Elbow when she's out and about. Oh, yes. Just like myself. If you want to be sporting some comfortable, fashionable attire from Collar and Elbow, make sure to go visit our friends there at collarandelbowbrand.com. And to save a little extra cash, to save 10% off your order, use promo code Linda K. That's L-I-N-D-A-K-A-Y. And be sporty and save some money. You know, without the uh, enhancement pills that Frank Thomas and Doug Flutie keep talking about, I went to bed last night working stiff, and I woke up this morning working stiff. So, um, so wearing that shirt, huh? Hey, hey, <laughs> when you're working stiff, you're working stiff, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, we don't have a ton of news to really get to. I mean, there's some news out there, but <laughs> really the big stuff comes from uh, comes from the world of WWE, and it's all on their, uh, you know, it's all on their content. So let's get right into SmackDown. The show opened up with Logan Paul. I know that Triple H has taken over, right? He was head of creative. He's the uh, uh, head of. Uh, what is it? Um, he's the executive talent of relations. talent relations. He's also content, uh, you know, the content uh, VP or something like that. So basically anything that goes out has his stamp on it. The Logan Paul stuff to me still smells of vintage WWE. Well, I don't know the major details, complete details, excuse me, of his contract, but Maybe this was already on paper to be a part of this uh, big show we'll discuss here in a minute. Um, I mean, I was thinking with this contract that there'd be something more regular with Logan Paul being utilized. I know mm -hmm. we saw him in that build up to SummerSlam, of course, at SummerSlam. Great showing, though. Definitely surprising how well uh, of a performance um, and yeah, he can perform. That's mm -hmm. not an issue at all. Yes, yes. He needs an athlete. Mm -hmm. um, yes, this is uh, pre-Triple H resurgence days here. Um, I, again, I, I don't know the full details of that contract, but perhaps this was already in the workings and um, we're, we're getting this huge announcement in that lead up. I know there's still quite a ways away for said event. Uh, Logan Paul will be a part of maybe who's to say he's not in one leading up to that prior, but um, rather surprising. Just out of nowhere, we see Logan Paul will be at SmackDown. Like Logan an RKO, Logan Paul. Out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Let's talk about it. Uh, we'll kind of diverge and then come back to it. The posters out there, Roman Reigns, Logan Paul for the WWE Unified Universal Heavyweight Championship of the World. November 5th, Saturday, live from Riyadh in Saudi Arabia, it's Crown Jewel. Yeah. I mean, Crown Jewel is always the event where, you know, there's going to be either um, a former Hall of Famer, for example, in the past. We had Goldberg uh, brought back. Um, it, this is the big worldwide sensation event overseas that will mm -hmm. definitely bring some names out there um i'm not sure i mean obviously logan paul is an international superstar i personally don't know as much about him i'm knowing more about him obviously watching wrestling and you know hey, it, it's 
you know, obviously he's, he's a very, very successful person and, you know, praise to that. Um, but as far as his international um, fame, I, I'm assuming, yes, maybe he is, you know, a, a big need or a big want, excuse me, a big desire to have um, at this huge annual pay-per-view um, overseas. So that being said. Or um, premium live event. Excuse me. Thank you. Thank <laughs> the you, PLE. Thank you. Hey, who's to say pay per view? We not come back in this. Uh, <laughs> you know, you make team. a great point. Yeah, pay, Triple H might call Mag. The hell with them. They call pay per views now. <laughs> I'm gonna call um, it in your house for all I care. Yeah, yeah. Well, so uh, you know, again, this Logan Paul announcement out of nowhere. I didn't realize there was the big press conference this past weekend as well. However, if this is going to be such a huge blockbuster match, a huge blockbuster event, we got to have some more build up to it. This huge lead up. Okay, you know, it's uh, mid-September, but before we know it, it will be November 5th, and this gives us some time, and with Roman Reigns not necessarily on every SmackDown, um, you know, now that I'm talking it out loud, um, this is ample timing to get something really built in there, which I will say, at first, I was just like, okay, we'll we'll get Logan Paul and Roman Reigns. I like more of a build-up before we get this marquee matchup, however... The start of SmackDown good did excuse me did get me um, much more intrigued. Intrigued is a good word um, because I'm intrigued. Will I care? You know, I'm not trying to be facetious about it or trying to downplay it, but I have to ask: Will WWE make me care? Because Logan Paul, um, while he may have a national appeal to a younger demographic, he is definitely not an international star. He's not a wrestling star. He's a multimedia star. He's, you know, done some boxing matches. He's uh, a YouTube star. He had Roman Reigns on his podcast, uh, mm-hmm. and then he started trash talking Roman Reigns, where Reigns would leave the set, which uh, led to a social media exchange, which is all contrived, right? We know that this isn't, you know, just something that's sprung out of nowhere. It's all contrived. I mean, Logan Paul may have been given, again, we don't know the details of his contract. We never will. But he may have been given, you know, a pay-per-view headlining night in whatever amount of dates deal that he mm-hmm. had for one year mm-hmm. or two years, right? So they figure, why burn it on maybe a, a stateside one? Why don't we have him headline the show over in Raid, you know, uh, or yeah, uh, Rita, uh, Saudi Arabia. Now this, uh, by the way, they started doing these in 2018. WWE has a 10-year partnership in support of Saudi Vision 2030, where Saudi Vision is basically to bring the world in and open up the borders of Saudi Arabia. So this is their uh, eighth event in Saudi Arabia. And again, they got a 10-year deal. So this could go on till 2028. So we could be having one, two, maybe three, you know, pay-per-view or premium live events in Saudi Arabia going forward. Yeah. Um, ultimate success in the previous events. We saw, I mean, the pomp and circumstance. It's pretty much looks the set, the production, like a WrestleMania, and especially the star power um, that's brought yeah. to Saudi Arabia. So, hey. The pyro and, is brought to Saudi Arabia. Yeah. A lot of restrictions there. Mm. Well, you know, as I just said, it is pretty much built, created, presented as if it was a WrestleMania type event. So having a more mainstream superstar celebrity, okay. Logan Paul, pretty much perfect considering he is also, you know, technically, obviously part of the WWE family and not yes. just contractually, but just in appearances and uh, he's just, working. This isn't yeah. a celebrity appearance like they used to be where a celebrity come in, do the deed and then, you know, disavow being in wrestling, you know, two years later, say, ah, I just did it for the money. These celebrities nowadays are in there to work. Bad Bunny is mm-hmm. a guy that was in there to work. Johnny Knoxville came in to work, you know, Logan mm-hmm. Paul. Uh, to his credit, is in there to work. He's not in there to make fun of the business. The You know, he's earning, I, I couldn't say that he's earned it yet, but because I'm not one of the boys, but he's earning, hopefully, the respect of the boys as well, getting in there and doing the work. So uh, it's official. That match is happening at Crown Jewel. It'll be Logan Paul and Roman Reigns. Uh, there is no chance in hell, sorry, Vince, that Logan Paul becomes the new universal champion, but it's something for Roman to do. And something different, a new program for Roman. I mean, my goodness, he's been the champion for how long now? About a minute. And, <laughs> and just a, a different feud um, into this huge event. So, again, the more we're talking about it, the more time is passing. Um, the more, again, as we talk about SmackDown here, the more, not just intrigue, but interest I'm getting into this matchup, Meathead. Okay. 
Well, the opening segment after the uh, work on the microphone, the return of Paul Heyman as well. Yeah. And uh, what I really enjoyed, <laughs> obviously, the honorary Oos being the, uh, hey, boss, hey, boss, let me punch him, boss, let me punch him, boss. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, he wants to get in there. So Sammy takes over for Paul. Paul flips the microphone and rings, says, be my guest, because there's a bet. <laughs> hey, Paul, you want to bet that I could knock you out before Solo even gets in the ring? No, 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 Paul. Step aside. I got this. And, of course, Sammy got knocked the F out. Yeah, but, hey, Sammy stepping it up, showing his dedication to the bloodline. Uh, I'm still enjoying uh, the spiffs here and there between him Mm -hmm. and Jey Uso. There was Uh, some legit heat there. There was a little bit outside. They teased us. Yeah. I liked that 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 face to face that we got right yeah. outside. The side. That that was great. But but hey, just the return of Paul Heyman popped at that as well. Oh yeah. And then right. seeing them all walk the bloodline with Sammy, the honorary who's walking <laughs> up behind Paul Heyman. Hey, That's Heyman, right. TV. Heyman. Uh, yeah. That was tremendous. And what that led to was a match between Sammy and uh, Ricochet. Ricochet with the win over Sammy Zayn. Now the next segment, uh, they dim the lights and they bring in, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome. The principal, uh, I forget what they call them. Are they principal owners or the, the creators or whatever? Maybe the creators of Maxine Max. and Max Dupree. Dupree. Uh, who's ring announcing on SmackDown? Do you know the name? It's Sam I mean, I, um, Irvin, Samantha. She's great. Samantha Irvin is amazing. Because yeah. we're going to get to something else that she does, too. But uh, her hitting a Dupree right at the end. Here comes the 2022 fall school collection. <laughs> it's Massey and Mansois. And then... As they're starting to show off what they got, these little book bags and the, you know, the Agnes Young, uh, you know, schoolboy look. <laughs> Here comes the monster of all monsters just blowing right through them. Oh, that was great. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 It's been a minute since they debuted a fashion line, so I was excited for that. And then all of a sudden the, the uh, Jumbotron showing monsters and then their faces tremendous that 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 was got me a, a good laugh there so cool to see that i hope we still get more uh fashion lines debuting i mean we've got uh halloween coming up we've got oh absolutely even christmas Again, I, I hope to see more of maximum male models this is one thing i hope does not go away in the triple h era because you know what there's something there for them they are on tv every week regardless if they're being run through every week they've got something uh, maximum male models, Max Dupree, Maxine Dupree, Massé, Mansois. There's something there. Uh, really, I think there's a place for them on this show. Mm-hmm. L- let us talk about the presentation now of Damage Control, the look of Bailey, Dakota Sky, and uh, Dakota Kai and EO Sky. Boy, again, you know, if this were Vince's day, they don't have Sky and Kai in the same area. I'm telling you, because mm-hmm. it's too much. Mm-hmm. I love the Titan Tron, the name, the presentation. That looks like a group. It's taken a while to get there, but they're there. Yeah. And having Bailey just helping put it all together, the 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 one on the mic really navigating everything. I was gonna say controlling, but C T R L uh damage controlling everything. Uh <laughs> great, great, great. I you know, ever since their debut at SummerSlam, I, I've been seeing them just gel more and connect more and now having two-thirds of them as the tag team champions bailey just doing her thing um i don't see it having to be too long till we get another uh championship into this this trio here at least at least that's what i'm I'm visualizing so bailey gets win over raquel rodriguez uh shotzi uh, Blackheart or Shotzi, I don't know if she got her last name back, but Shotzi comes in for the save after it was going to be a three on one on Raquel. Shotzi looks like she's uh, maybe swinging it back to the good side. Liv Morgan challenges Ronda Rousey to an Extreme Rules match. What did you think Oof. of this promo? I, I liked the presentation. It was different. Uh, we were, I was expecting a backstage interview with Kayla Braxton. She didn't really have to say much because we get uh, Liv Morgan, the champ, coming in and sitting down. So I liked. The presentation of this, it was better than um hate them coming out in the, the ring, microphone face challenging to face, the music contra- and- yeah, yeah. This this was neat. And, and they didn't get in each other's faces. It was just more of like a like <laughs> I just loved Rhonda's reaction, like you're challenging me to an extreme right. rose match, and there's just something about si- signing or, or now what did she say? Um, not this is your funeral, but something along those lines. But something I liked that they had 
I mean, it was a face-to-face moment, but just presented in a different way. And I loved seeing um, the re- the restraint from Rhonda, just because we've seen these past few weeks, her and Adam Pierce, just her yeah. not holding Grab Daddy. back. Yeah, so th- this was neat. I liked it. And um, obviously, we knew this match was coming, but now we have this stipulation, which made me think, like, hey, I'm looking forward to the um, other stipulations that we'll have coming up um, mm-hmm. for Extreme Rules. Drew McIntyre on the microphone. Did you love the thing that Karrion Cross gave first, the black and white, and then talking about how he's now the people's executioner? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Loved that. I lo- also loved, again, something different. Drew McIntyre just coming out of nowhere. That, there he is, right on the, <laughs> on the, on the table. That's that, right. that was pretty cool, too. Yep. All right. Uh, hey, the North American Championship was defended and retained by Solo Sokoa, uh, defeating Madcap Moss. You know what? Good feature match for Madcap Moss. Yes. Yes. And also just noticing a little bit more light um, shine down on NXT there for, um, or on um, the big show there, getting obviously the NXT championship match being on display there on SmackDown, as well as just showing the recap of um, Solo the other night, uh, getting the North American championship um, on NXT as well. So good to see that again, just getting more eyes onto NXT and how much um, that program really means to those, you know, making it onto the bigger shows. Yep. Main event, Rich Holland and Butch, the New Day, Hit Row, and Imperium. Linda, uh, I said this to you pre-show. Somebody heard me, or I kind of knew it was coming. Imperium with the right clothes on, because Imperium's clothes actually say Imperium on them. I see. Very nice. Yes. Uh, and- I want that tracksuit. I mean, the tracksuit's amazing. I love the tracksuit. I also love how Gunther's back wearing the black uh, trench coat because obviously with, yeah. with the whole Imperium look. But um, yes, I loved this match. I, I I loved all those teams too. I thought this was a great, great match, a great showing. I mean, we had lots of moments in that match. I'll let you mm-hmm. run through that. But just to start, I loved just watching all of their entrances. And again, yeah. how about the brawling groups now? Ah. Oh, yeah, that's faces. right. Mm-hmm. Hey, and the Brawling Brutes are uh, going to be taking on the Usos next week. So they are the number one contenders for the Tag Team Championships. Uh, the Brawling Brutes stealing the victory as, you know, really Imperium had it all set up, ready to go. Uh, mm-hmm. Really frantic two to three minutes at the end there for a finish. This was an amazing match. Uninterrupted by Braun Strowman. <laughs> yes, that too. I know you guys were speculating on that, you and Matthew, but no, we, but we got a tr- another tremendous match just like the week prior um it was that six-man tag match uh with the brawling brutes and with imperium this week we got the um four-way tag team match but again just a great showing and then the highlights okay top dollar you know we got that tease last week is he gonna go over the top rope fly it over i should say we didn't quite get it again this week we thought we were but instead i mean how about that moment with the three of them on his back and uh, him having it was xavier butch and um mm-hmm. who was it also on him but well, guess it doesn't matter it was all Can't three men it. sorry oh no worries but that was awesome to see as well as ridge holland slamming top dollar as well or picking him up uh, yeah I, I gotta go back and watch it I, I thought, yeah it's a, it's a go back and watch match is really yeah. what it was so got the really happy with... chance going for a while yeah. too it was on mute for a while it's like i'm assuming <laughs> that's what's happening right now yep so, no, the match was amazing. Uh, congratulations to the Brawling Brutes. Uh, Holland getting a little bit of a beard. Uh, Butch looking a little bit more Pete Dunnish, But mm-hmm. they are the number one contenders for the Tag Team Championships. Let's slide on over to Rampage. Again, the fastest, most jam-packed 60 minutes in professional wrestling. You're sounding like Excalibur two. just now, just so you know. Right. <laughs> I, right. And that's what I'm saying. I don't want to run through all of this like Excalibur right before a pay-per-view because that dude's got to read off 17 matches. All right. The main event was Samoa Joe and Josh Woods. We also have Penelope Ford and Willow Nightingale. Matt Hardy returning against Darby Allen and Ethan Page against Dan Housen. Yes, the very, very good, but very, very evil. Yes. Uh, the show starts off right away hot with Darby Allen and Matt Hardy. Returning Matt Hardy, uh, looking good, but there, uh, there's no chance. It's Darby Allen for the win. I, I was hoping for a bigger presentation for Matt Hardy. I know uh, you and Matthew discussed, uh, will we get broken Matt Hardy? Will we get right. the version? Well, we Matt get Hardy. pizza delivery, Matt Hardy. I mean, what are we getting? Oh, God. <laughs> that was something I actually watched back to me, just so you know, I did laugh hard at that, uh, um, the pizza. I can't think of his name right now, but that moment. Anyways, back to <laughs> Rampage. Um, hey, still a great match. I loved how, you know. The Queenie or something like that. I can't think of his name. Right. No, 
um, Luigi, um, some, but um, I loved the the showing of respect that they showed between Matt Hardy and Darby Allen and the story again of how much uh, Darby Allen looked up to the Hardys growing up. Yeah. Um, great match, of course, as we you know would expect. Um, I guess with this, we do have the um, continuation with the House of Black story. With remember, House um, of Black is only two members now. This isn't really breaking news, but it's mm-hmm. been confirmed by Malachi slash Alistair Black. He's no longer with AEW. Mm-hmm. Uh, he had yeah. said or three, basic, three members, Ju- Julie Hart. So I guess there's yeah. three. But he had, but, he yeah, had no, said no. that uh, he is no longer there. It was a mental health situation. He was given certain stipulations that uh, basically is a no compete clause. He was allowed to be released, so he can't jump in another ring. You know, at X amount of time. Mm-hmm. Will we see him back in WWE? Will we see him? Who knows? But right now, uh, Alakai slash uh, Alistair slash Malakai <laughs> no <laughs> longer. I said Alakai. I could put them together there. Maybe he comes back as Alakai. But uh, no longer with AEW. Uh, they came after him at the end. So there will be a match this Wednesday uh, with the House of Black, Darby and Sting. Yes. Or um, with um, uh, Brody. Yes, Brody, Brody King, King and uh, Buddy Matthews. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I'm looking forward to that. And um, I was going to say know. something with Matt Hardy there, but I guess no. Like, he doesn't have to be in there, but maybe he'll. I'm just thinking of something where I want more Matt Hardy. Sorry. You're thinking of back in the ring, I want more Matt Hardy. Um, there you go. AEW. Hey, let's talk about uh, Claudio Castagnoli coming out. The tracksuits. Because the uh, Blackpool Combat Club also in the tracksuits. Which one do I get? Do I go get the Imperium one or do I get the Blackpool Combat Club? It is over the, the same breast as well. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's The look looks good. So uh, really what we got here is Claudio being interrupted by Chris Jericho. And mentioning how he's been a world champion in multiple companies, but he's never been Ring of Honor champion. That's happening this Wednesday. Jericho Casanoli. Yeah, um, kind of out of nowhere as well, but but I'm okay with the match. I, yes. I mean, I'm excited for it. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the way you know Jericho just presents everything, even just Ocho, Ocho, anything again. I'm going Jericho for the Ocho. Gold, so, yeah. yeah, so anything he presents, I'm okay. I'm looking forward to that one. I know I'll be entertained. I know we'll get a great match there. Um, I will say, Bo was surprised the mention of WWF, WWE. Ah, uh, we did hear that WCW. Um, uh-huh. just interesting to hear that. On, obviously, obviously, we know the doors. You know, finds us. It's 2022. That's open, what but, we do. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I am looking forward to that one. And again, oh, oh, yeah, that's right. All right. Uh, the, uh, the baddies in the back, your girl, uh, Jade Cargill, uh, as well in the back. And she says she's destroyed the entire locker room. Well, Diamante, I want to be interested in this match, but it kind of a point I make to you when we were off here, I'm going to bring it in now. And I wanted to point it up at this specific spot. There's no build to these characters. We keep getting all these new, interesting, different, you know, returning character matchups, but there's no steam to them. When was the last time we've seen Diamante on proper TV, Dynamite or Rampage? Yeah, I know it's. it's I'm going to see it work, but don't get me wrong. I just have no investment. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it's just something where it's saved for the one day, the, the, the certain superstar that takes the tbs championship off jade i think maybe it's they're really i mean if you think about it a lot of jade's matches really haven't had much of a build-up regardless right. even the the her matches defending the title so i mean i guess it's just going to be a thing it's that until said person whoever that may be that right and um, whoever that for santina morella i mean who's no. to say? yeah but that is when i i would see i would hope for a, a big Build a build. So but that who's that person that. building now that we don't know of? There is no one. They made this belt that does nothing. And they've, trust me, don't get me started on how many belts they got and what they mean. So let's move over to Willow Nightingale and Penelope Ford. Uh, a victory for uh, Penelope Ford with Kip Sabian looking along. Yeah. Fan of Penelope Ford. And um, I know to your point, though, it's, I mean, I guess not every match necessarily needs that strong buildup. But if we're. We don't. I need yeah. something. All right. How about Dan Housen? Yes. All ego Ethan Page as well with Stokely Hathaway. Remember, their group is called The Firm, and it's mm-hmm. a great first outing for The Firm. So after Ethan Page giggles his way past Dan Housen's shenanigans, <laughs> match over. 
Yes. I'm trying to Just think like of- the commentary on the match. It's over. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was pausing to see. I was like, did I miss something that happened after that? Nothing. Uh, that was it. Uh, but hey, this feud started last week, remember, after uh, <laughs> the kick to the face to Luigi. So yep. there you go. <laughs> there you go. All right. Main event, uh, the ROH World TV title, Samoa Joe and Josh Woods. And again, we're getting a match this uh, Friday at the Grand Slam Rampage, only built a week prior. Because after Samoa Joe defeats Josh Woods, uh, Tony Nese and uh, Mark Sterling and Josh Woods start to gang up on Samoa Joe. Here comes Wardlow. They, you know, touch tips with the belts. And now we're going to have a tag match. That's the build. You get a one interaction and a build. Well, I mean, there is, I saw, um, not only do we have Dynamite for two hours this week, but we also get a two-hour Rampage as it's well. So, yeah, uh, just a you know, way to feature everybody. And it's with, you know, talent that a lot of the fans do love and admire. So, um, but yeah, I do agree. Like, yeah, it would be, you know, for especially the Grand Slam event being a huge event, it would be cool to see Yo. some some Yo. more matchups, yes, yeah, so with more of the buildups. But, I mean... Um, there's just so much talent, so many superstars here at AEW. Yeah. I mean, I, the matter of juggling all the talents to try to do this, do that, be on Oh, we don't need any juggles at this show. We have enough. Right. I said juggling and juggling. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Linda, that's a lot. Uh, we got Raw tonight. Tomorrow morning, we've got Matthew Thomas stepping in for Linda Kay, and we're going to break down everything that happens on Raw. Maybe we'll have more details on what's going on with the Roman Reigns, Logan Paul stuff, and much, much more. I know we got uh, Bobby Lashley stuff coming up as well. So for Linda Kay, for Matthew Thomas, I'm the man they call me to. Hey, thanks for stopping by. We'll talk to you tomorrow morning. So long, everyone.